Today, now I'm, I'm just going to let you get settled in for a second. Now, I spent eight hours on this sermon yesterday. Now, that doesn't mean it's an eight-hour sermon. When a preacher spends eight hours on a sermon, it's so that it doesn't become an eight-hour sermon. So I'm not started yet, so don't put this on my time. I'm just talking right now, okay? And, and here's the deal. Here's the deal. Easter Sunday is notoriously the most difficult Sunday to preach to a crowd because everybody has new shoes or a new tie on or new outfit on or, or, or they're ready for the Easter egg hunt. So I know that, and I have a roast. Amen. I woke up in a dream this morning. Amen. I was laying in bed, and all of a sudden, this heavenly cloud filled my house. And it was smelled like roast. Amen. And, uh, and I woke up, and the ladies were in there, and they, have, they were putting the roast into the slow cooker. So I, I promised them I'm not going to burn the roast. Amen. Amen. So here we go. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Here we go. Amen. All right. In a world where we seek an explanation before exploration, and we seek to understand before we experience, I will ask you today to journey with me back in time through your imagination to the first Easter morning. There we will peer into the darkness of an empty tomb and discover the realm of the supernatural where the unexplainable meets the undeniable. Just as Easter heralds the awe-inspiring miracles of Jesus' resurrection and his message of a new birth to Nicodemus were beyond human understanding, they were undeniably true, but unable to understand. So is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in another tongue. As we reflect on the profound impact of the resurrection from the bewildered witnesses at the empty tomb to the disciples who encountered the risen Savior let us remember that some truths are too magnificent to be fully grasped by human reasoning alone and just as Nicodemus grappled with Jesus's message of the spiritual rebirth we too are invited to ponder the mysteries of the Holy Ghost and the transformative, transformative power that the Holy Ghost holds for us today. In short, the supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit challenges us to embrace the divine beyond our own understanding. Today, we acknowledge that the original outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost was a supernatural event that, de uh, that defied human logic and left the onlookers that day amazed at the divine work unfolding before their eyes. And just as the wind and its source, where it comes from and where it seeks to blow, remains a mystery, the working of the Holy Spirit may elude our comprehension. Yet it is undeniable, and its impact on our hearts, our lives, and our soul are unmistakable. It brings forth, when it comes to us, renewal. I prayed for somebody today, and today in this place, you've been renewed uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it brings forth empowerment. Uh, I felt courage and strength come to someone that I laid my hands on today as the Holy Ghost filled them power came into them to be more than a conqueror and it brings salvation to the soul to the saving of the soul and the sealing of that soul unto the day of redemption that is to whosoever will and will open themselves to its understanding and its touch so let us embrace this easter sunday amen with our hearts wide open let us embrace with our hearts wide open the unexplainable but undeniable power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. And let's journey together in faith and in expectation, exploring the Word of God, letting the light of God's love illuminate our path and guide us towards a sacred encounter before we leave this house today. I know many of you have already felt the Holy Ghost, uh, but if there's one person in this place uh, who's yet to receive the, the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, I offer this sanctuary to you today as a sacred house of prayer. 
desire that before you leave this place today, you can be filled with His divine presence and power. That something can happen to you that you may not understand, but you cannot deny. This experience transcends human understanding. It fills us with an undeniable encounter and divine empowerment of God. Today, we read of Jesus' resurrection, if they'll help me with that, in Luke 24. Amen. I've got a lengthy reading, and that's why I'll let you be seated. Amen. In Luke 24, amen, verse number 1, it says, But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in. But they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ uh, is risen uh, and is alive forevermore? He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee? That the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered what he had said. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else there with them what had just happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to these men. So they didn't believe what they were hearing. However, Peter jumped up and he ran to the tomb. And he looked in. Stooping down, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. And when he went home again, it blew his mind wondering what just happened. Amen. There were two men that were on the way to Emmaus. They ran into Jesus. He came in and sat down and supped with them. I'm giving you a synopsis so we can move to the next part of the story in chapter 24, verse 35. Then these two men from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling them about it, Jesus himself suddenly was standing there among them. He said, peace be with you. The reason he said peace would be with you is because they were, their minds were blown. They were scared to death. Amen. A while ago he wasn't in the room, and now he's in the room. Peace, just settle down. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, Jesus asked. Or why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. Can't you see it's really me? I'm telling you, they were discovering something that was beyond human comprehension. They had just seen him crucified and horribly killed on an old rugged tree on Calvary. But now he stands before them, giving them joy, giving them peace. He, Why are you frightened? Uh, can't you see it's really me? He said, touch me and make sure I'm not a ghost. Because ghosts don't have bones or bodies, excuse me, as you see that I do. And as he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. They still, excuse me, still they stood there in disbelief. Everybody say in disbelief. And they were filled with joy and wonder. The word wonder means something that is beyond human comprehension. Then he asked them, I guess this is not working, so we're going to have to give you a physical illustration. Jesus asked them, do you have anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it, and they watched. Their mind was blown. He had been preaching about it. He had told them about it. He had it had been prophesied that he would be crucified and on the third day be risen from the grave. They had heard it preached. They had walked with him. They had heard him say it. But here it was in front of them and they could not 
understand it. It was non-comprehendable to their mind what was happening in their reality. And that's why, amen, today I'm preaching to you there is an unexplainable but undeniable move of the supernatural that you can tap into in your world today. Amen. And so these men, these men and these uh, th that were there, the 11, amen, the, the, this empty tomb, uh, it, it, and when we see that scene, the empty tomb bewildered the women and the disciples. But the risen Savior made it impossible and undeniable. It made it impossible not to believe and made it undeniable. The resurrection shattered human logic. And I want to stop and take a breath. And I want you just to listen with me and think with me. Can you imagine that scene? Can you grasp it? No, you cannot. It does not compute with your brain. But you have accepted that scene in faith. The resurrection shattered human logic and revealed the power of God at work. Quite simply, it was unexplainable to their minds. But it became undeniable when they encountered the risen Lord, alive among them and hungry and ready to eat. And just like the resurrection, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, evidenced by speaking in other tongues, may seem mysterious and unexplainable and even incomprehensible to the human mind. But its undeniable power transforms lives uh, like mine. Uh, it takes an old wretched sinner like me, a drug addict and a meth freak, uh, a Pentecostal preacher's kid on the way to hell. But that divine experience uh, changed everything uh, in my life. Uh, I walked into a service one way and I walked out another way. I don't know how it happened, but I can't deny that it did. This undeniable power of the Holy Spirit transforms our lives and brings forth new beginnings. Amen. They sing about it today. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. I couldn't help but standing there beside my wife, looking down the row in the aisle there with my family there, and just say, Lord, everything I have is because of you. Uh, my son is because of you. My daughter-in-law is because of you. My grandson because of you. The car I drove in today because of you. The house I live in because of you. Everything that I have, my health because of you. He's worthy of it all. Amen. It was one experience uh, that changed everything in my life. And I know some of us struggle today and some of you struggle in our lack of understanding the supernatural. Amen. The, and, and, but it is simply undeniable. Amen. And even some in the religious world, some scholars like Nicodemus, now, I don't have time to go into it, but Nicodemus was a theologian, if you will. He was a preacher's preacher. He knew the Bible inside and out, the Torah inside and out. He knew the Word of God. Amen. But Nicodemus, he struggled with and stumbled when trying to understand the new birth experience. Go with me, if you will, back to the Scripture and the book of John. And we find in the third chapter and the first verse these words. Uh, there was a man named Nicodemus. He was a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. And after dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? This theologian, what do you mean? Asked Nicodemus. What do you mean? How can a man, an old man, go back into his mother's womb and be born again? You are blowing my mind, Jesus. You're Has anybody in this house ever had your mind blown by Jesus? Oh, come on, come on, somebody. Come on, help me preach a little bit. I know it's Eastern. I know, I know the eggs are waiting, but have you ever had your mind blown by Jesus? He said, what do you mean? Uh, and Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God. Say it with me. No one can enter the kingdom of God 
without being born of the water and the Spirit. Amen. Uh, as I was practicing, amen, this message today, my grandson, I, he came into the room and I started reading it out loud. Amen. I very rarely tap out all of my sermons like I have today, but to keep it short and not to do what I'm doing right now. See, I'm just wandering off down here, down here. Here goes the roast. I can smell it burning. Amen. But he came into the room. Amen. And, and he said, he said, Papa, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm going over my lesson. And I told him what I told you. I'm going over my sermon. It's a tough morning and you got to get it done in a hurry. And people are anxious to go. And he said, oh. And so I started reading it out loud. And I started reading the part where Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born of the water and the spirit. And I just thought it was a good time for a teaching moment. And I said, Waylon, do you know what that means, being born of the water? He said, yes, sir. That's baptism. And I said, have you already been baptized? He said, yes, sir. I got baptized in Jesus' name, just like Layton's going to get baptized today. Amen. And I said, "Do you, amen, amen. I said, do you understand that second part? He said, what, what, what are you talking about? I said, that spirit part. He said, I think that's the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I said, yes, sir, that's right. It's the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I said, you know you get it when you speak in tongues supernaturally as it comes over you and you surrender your life to it. It's beyond human understanding. Uh, it's beyond human comprehension. But even a 10-year-old child can understand when Jesus says, unless uh, a man is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of of heaven amen he cannot see the kingdom of God so I beg you I beseech you by the power of God if you've not been baptized in the name of Jesus get in line behind Leighton we'll put you down in the water today and at the end of this service or right now I'm preaching the power of the Holy Ghost can fall on you and as you surrender your life to Jesus Christ you will begin to to speak in other tongues uh, as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I know it's unexplainable to your human mind, but oh, how many of you happened to, has it happened to? Amen. How many would say it's undeniable? Huh? It's undeniable. Huh? It's undeniable. I, I can't really explain it, uh, but I got it. He said, what do you mean? He, he said, I assure you, no one can enter without being born of the water and spirit. Humans can only reproduce human life. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. And then he gives the illustration of the wind. The wind blows wherever it wants to. And just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you cannot explain to how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus, his mind is being blown. He does not understand it. He, he cannot understand and comprehend. How are these things possible? And Jesus replied, he said, you are a respected teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I love it. A 10-year-old with faith can understand what a respected teacher without faith cannot understand. I assure you, Amen. And we, he said, I assure you, we tell you what we know and what we've seen, and yet you don't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, uh, how can you possibly believe uh, if I tell you about heavenly things? Uh, you see, Nicodemus uh, was having a hard time. Amen. He was having a hard time comprehending, and he was struggling with understanding Jesus' message of being born of the water and spirit. Jesus explained that spiritual birth is a mysterious process, much like the wind, whose source and destination cannot fully be explained. Similarly, the Holy Spirit and the receiving of the Holy Ghost may be beyond our understanding. It challenges our rationality, but it is undeniable in its impact uh, as it is felt in our hearts uh, and seen in our lives uh, as we are born again into a new spiritual reality. Like Nicodemus, we may not understand it, but we will not be able to deny it when we experience our own personal Pentecost. You may sit in this congregation and go, you know, I hear these people speaking in tongues, but I just don't know. 
Amen. There may be a healthy suspicion about you. I, I've seen stuff before that's kind of strange or mysterious, and I, I don't get it. Amen. I tell you, we live in a generation that wants to understand it before they experience it. Amen. They want to figure it all out before they experience it. But I'm going to challenge you before you leave here today to take a step in faith uh, and to say, you know what? Uh, even though I can't explain it, uh, I can't deny it. Uh, even though I don't understand it all, uh, amen, I want to explore everything that Jesus Christ has for me. We may not understand it, but we won't be able to deny it when we experience our own personal Pentecost just like the apostles experienced on that great outpouring day of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. Now we go in closing to that book of Acts, to the final reading today, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1. I want to read about what happened on the original outpouring to you. And on the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place, and suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared to, and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them this ability. At this time, there were devout men, Jews, from every nation living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this loud noise, everyone came running. And they were bewildered together to hear their own language being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. And they said, how can this thing be? They could not explain how a Galilean was speaking in their language. These people are from Galilee, yet we hear them speak in our own native languages. And here we are, Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, and all kinds of other places are listed there, both Jew and converts to Judaism, Christians and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own language about the wonderful things that God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. And they asked themselves, what's going on here? I'm trying to figure it out. What's going on in this church service? I saw somebody speaking in tongues, and I don't know what that's all about. I heard somebody gibberish and something going on over here a while ago. I saw somebody else on the other side begin to praise God and to speak in other tongues. What's going on? They asked themselves that same question. They said, what does this mean? They asked each other. deny what you see. Don't make a mistake about that. These people are not drunk, uh, as some of you are assuming. Uh, you see, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's much too early for that. Uh, no, what you see uh, was predicted, prophesied long ago by the prophet Joel. What you see in this house today uh, was prophesied long ago uh, on the day of Pentecost was poured out and today was realized in this place said this he prophesied in the last days God said I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams and in those days will I pour out my spirit even upon my servants uh, upon men and women alike Can somebody say men and women alike amen there's no men there's no women we're all alike in God can you say amen do you understand what I just said? Amen. The world's trying to struggle for glass ceilings to be broken and equity and equality. I'm here to tell you the Bible's been preaching it. Amen. Since the second chapter of Acts, uh, that whether you're a man or you're a woman, uh, you come to Christ the same. Uh, and he's willing to fill you just like he filled me. Uh, and he's willing to fill the person beside you. It doesn't matter your race, your creed, your gender, your ethnicity, your background, whether who you are, where you came from. You you got a God uh, who's wanting to put his supernatural presence into you in an undeniable fashion. He said, I'll pour out my spirit on men and women alike and they will prophesy. 
and I will cause wonders in the heavens and above and signs in the earth below, blood, fire, and clouds of smoke, and the sun will become dark and the moon will be turned blood red. This is the last days of the Lord, what he's prophesying here, Joel's talking about, before that great and glorious day that the Lord arrives. But I like the 21st verse, amen. All of that stuff's going to happen in the earth. No doubt it will, and it's going to sooner than what we think. Huh? But he said this in the 21st verse, uh, but everyone, somebody say everyone. Everyone who calls uh, on the name uh, of the Lord uh, will be saved. Uh, I'm here to preach to you today in this place. Uh, if you are willing to lift your hands uh, and cry, Jesus, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, Jesus, uh, you are the Lord of my life. Uh, his saving power will come through the infilling of the Holy Ghost. He went on to preach for a short time, and I pick up his message in the 36th verse. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you've crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Then Peter replied, uh, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. Somebody needs to do that with me right now. Are you ready to repent in this house? Anybody ready to repent in this house? Come on. Anybody ready to repent in this house? Amen. I'm going to repent. Are you? Lord, uh, you are my Lord. Uh, I love you with all of my heart. Uh, with all, Come on. All of my soul. Uh, with all of my mind. Uh, with all of my strength. Come on. Do it with me. Uh, I turn away from my own understanding. Uh, I turn away from my own knowledge. Uh, and I turn to you. Uh, not my will, but thy will be done. Somebody help me repent in this place. Place today I turn to you Lord uh, with all of my heart say it with me out loud if you would everybody I turn to you with all of my heart come on all of my soul all of my mind all of my strength uh, you are the Lord of my life lift your hands and love him right now oh come on I turn to him right now in this place each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is unto you, unto your children, unto your grandchildren. Amen. I'm hearing, I'm seeing some smiling grandfolks. Amen. In this house, unto your children, and to your grandchildren, those who are far off, and all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourself, save yourself. Look at somebody beside you and tell them that with me. Save yourself. Come on, listen, look, look at somebody beside you and say, save yourself. Come on, save you. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Save yourself. Huh? I can't save you. Tell them I can't save you. Come on. Come on. Tell them I can't save you. But you can save yourself. Huh? You can act on what you hear in this house today and save yourself. Save yourself from this crooked generation. And those who believe what Peter had preached uh, were baptized uh, and were added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Can you say amen? Amen, amen. I'm trying to bring this message to a conclusion today. I thank you for giving me your attention. And I know it's a little awkward for those hearers of those that I normally preach this message, amen, to that you're used to me being a little more ad lib and, and a little less aligny today. But I'm trying to keep us on the clock and yet give you what God gave me, what I spent eight hours yesterday praying over, typing and retyping. You see, amen, this original outpouring on the day of Pentecost uh, where these believers were filled with the Holy Spirit and they all began to speak with another tongue it, as a sign, a supernatural sign of that experience. Uh, it was a supernatural outpouring. It left the witnesses with their minds perplexed and amazed uh, at God's good work among them. The unexplainable event of Pentecost serves as a reminder that the Holy Ghost outpouring defies human limitation. 
I don't care how big of a sinner you were when you walked into this place. Uh, you can walk out of here the temple of the Holy Ghost, uh, full of the power of God. The unexplainable event of Pentecost serves as a reminder. The Holy Ghost outpouring defies human limitation. Yet its undeniable evidence is witnessed through transformed lives, bold testimonies, and divine empowerment. Through the power of this experience, hearts are renewed and souls are saved. Can you say amen? In conclusion, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his message to Nicodemus were beyond human comprehension. Yet they were truly undeniable. And so is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in other tongues. Just as Jesus' resurrection and message challenged the norms of his time, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost challenges us. And it challenges us to step beyond the confines of human reasoning and into the realm of the unshakable faith. So let us open our hearts to the unexplainable working of God's Spirit knowing that his undeniable power will bring about a transformed life, bring about salvation for my soul and a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm asking you today to go with me and to seek this experience with faith and expectation. We're going to make this a house of prayer in just a few moments. We're going to give you the opportunity to seek the Lord with all of your heart, with your soul, your mind, and your strength. They're going to be preparing the baptistry, and I'm going to get the, the privilege of, of, of baptizing Leighton today. And so I'm going to be leaving here. Pastor Tim will be taking over in just a moment. But as I leave this platform and as I go to baptize him, I challenge you not to dismiss yourself from the presence, the undeniable presence of the unexplainable spirit of the Holy Ghost. I want us to seek this experience with faith and expectation for the next few moments. Allowing the Holy Ghost right now. Can you just allow the Holy Ghost to start moving through you? Amen. Could you, those believers and those that are filled, could you just let it start flowing through you today? I close with this illustration. Imagine for a moment that you enter a room and are met with complete darkness. You reach for the light switch on the wall and without fully understanding the intricate workings behind that switch, you simply flip on the switch with expectation. That light will instantly flood the room. In that simple action, you exercise faith in the unseen mechanism that brings forth light at your command. Similarly, today, when we approach the concept of receiving the Holy Ghost, evidence with speaking in other tongues, we may not fully grasp the complexities of the spirit realm, but just like the switch that we flipped in faith, we do not need to comprehend every detail of how the Holy Ghost operates. Instead, we're called to step out in faith, flip the switch of our hearts towards God, and expect His Spirit to fill us with the divine illumination and power of the Holy Ghost. When we choose to repent of our sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus and open our hearts to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, it is like flipping the switch of faith in that moment of surrender, we invite God's transformative power and light to shine into the darkest corners of our life. It dispels doubt and confusion, and His undeniable presence takes hold. Just as electricity empowers the light bulb and brings illumination to the room, the Holy Ghost empowers us. And it shines brightly for the glory of God through us. 
We may not fully comprehend its mysteries and how the Spirit works within us, but we can trust that His power is real. His love is unending and His presence always changes the atmosphere. So today let us approach the altar of God with the same simple faith we exhibit when flipping a light switch. Let us expect the Holy Ghost to flood our hearts, our minds, our souls with His unexplainable but undeniable power. And let's yield to the divine touch of the Almighty. His divine light will shine through us, illuminating the world around us with the radiance of His love and truth. Can we stand? Prepare your hearts to receive the gift of God. Would every person in this place, every hungry-hearted believer, prepare yourself to receive the gift of God. I know many of you came in here with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I know many of you have already been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But right now in this house, right now in this place, right now in this house, right now in this place, could we make it a house of prayer? Could I have all the Holy Ghost folks, amen, filled folks, just begin to pray right now in the Holy Ghost? Come on, lift up your voice to God right now. Lift up your voice to God right now. Let the Holy Ghost begin to flow through you right now in this place. Come on, let the Holy Ghost flow. And as we reflect on the unexplainable yet undeniable power of the Holy Ghost, I invite you to respond to God's call on your life today. God is reaching for you. And if you've been touched by the message you've heard today and you feel a stirring in your spirit, this is the moment. Somebody say, this is my moment. Come on, help me, church. Uh, this is the moment of divine appointment for you today. If you're ready to turn away from your sins and be buried in the name of Jesus Christ in baptism and to open your hearts to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, evidenced by speaking in other tongues, uh, I encourage you to take the step of faith today. Flip on the switch of your heart right now. Would you open your mouth and begin to talk to God right where you're at? God, I love you. Uh, God, I want you to be my boss, the Lord uh, of my life. Uh, I want to give myself completely to you. Right now is your day. If you felt anything in this service today, the tugging of God's presence and power, I challenge you, I challenge you right now to flip on the switch of faith. The Holy Spirit is moving in our midst right now. Come on, right now it's happening in this building. It's drawing hearts closer to God. Come on, right now He's talking to you. God wants to transform you by His grace. If you're in this house and you desire a deeper walk with God, open your heart right now. He'll fill you. I can't explain it, but I can't deny it. If you had longed for that unexplainable yet undeniable encounter that only He can provide, I invite you right now to come forward around this front. Uh, if you want a renewal, would you step out, amen, as a sign of your willingness to receive His fullness in your life, amen. Don't let fear or doubt cause you delay. Thank you. Amen. There's one coming. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day of redemption. Amen. Thank you for coming. Amen. You're going over here. Amen. Today is a day of redemption. A day of divine exchange. Somebody in this house. Come on, saints. Help me. Somebody step out of where you're at and step up. Amen. Let us... Let the love of God wash over you, cleanse you, and empower you with His Spirit. I'm telling you today, this front is open. We call it an altar, but it's simply a place that we make a step in faith to seek God's presence. And God is ready to meet you right here, right where you're at in this house today. I beg you, dear friends, come. Come and be a part of this sacred moment of surrender and transformation. Come on, let's pray together. Somebody else, step away where you're at. Maybe you take the hand of somebody beside you. Let's pray together. Amen. Let's seek the Lord's presence afresh uh, to fall in our hearts, uh, to fall in our lives. Uh, willing hearts, ready to receive. I pray you do not delay. I pray that you do not to delay. For now is the time to experience the unexplainable. And let the undeniable grace and power of God fill your hearts, lives, and mind.
If you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit in you, I pray right now you do not hesitate. I pray you make a step in faith. I pray you come forward. We will join with you in prayer. We will join you at the front as others are coming and praying. And as we seek the outpouring of God's Spirit, amen, He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you don't feel comfortable coming to the front, if you'll just take the hand of somebody beside you, thank you, sir. There's others coming, amen. Take the hand of somebody beside you and say, pray with me. Pray with me. Huh? I want the unexplainable in my life. Come on, everybody, if it's co- convenient, take the hand of the person beside you and say, would you pray with me? Huh? I want the unexplainable in my life. Huh? I want the undeniable power of God. Amen. The Lord is calling you today. He's calling you. Will you answer? Will you answer? Come on, saints, help me pray. Will you answer his call? Will you answer his call? Will you answer his call? He's calling you. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to understand it. I can't truly explain it, but I can't deny what God has done in my life and wants to do in yours today. Amen. In faith right now, could you reach towards God? Could you come to Christ as you are and where you're at? And let His love and mercy overflow you right now. Can you step forward, casting aside all doubt and fear, allowing the love of God to wash over you? Pastor Tim, would you come, cleansing you and empowering you in His Spirit? The altar's open. Come on, every eye closed, every heart open to God, every mind was concentrating on God the invitation is extended to you right now will you come and answer the call to a deeper walk with the divine today, Pastor T you brought me out of darkness into glorious light thank you Jesus, for the blood of light. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. You brought me out of darkness into Bishop, what a wonderful word this morning. My, my, my. Amen, amen. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, your sacrifice. Amen. We are so excited. Amen. I think we're fixing to have a baptism. Oh, man. Amen. For anybody else that needs to be baptized, we got other robes. Amen. We just get it going. Amen. Praise the Lord. Asking all the children to make their way. Everybody keep standing for just a moment. Amen. Asking all of our children to make their way over here where Sister Foster told you earlier if you can do so. But if there is someone here that's never been baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, 
uh, that you can fulfill that in faith today and you can be baptized. Uh, if you don't remember how you were baptized, maybe you were a little child and you weren't for sure how you were baptized, uh, then we can we can baptize you today. You weren't for sure. Maybe it was in the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and uh, you're not sure we want to apply the name of Jesus in your life. We can do that. Amen. If you do, come over to here to my right. Amen. And uh, your left, and we'll baptize you in the lovely name of Jesus. All right. This is awesome right here. Oh, come on. This is the next generation church. Come on. Ha. Amen. Okay. And then you're going to sit down. Come on there. And you're going to sit right down. Just sit down there, and I'll tell you everything else to do, okay? Amen. In a minute, we're going to do this. Watch it. I'm going to get you to hold this or do this. And I'm going to use this as a hand. Do it. Take this one and hold your nose. Take this one and hold your nose. That one and hold your hand. Okay. And then I'm going to put my hand here so you don't have to do anything. Okay. Now take a breath. All right. Just okay. We're going to pray first. All right. All right. I'm excited for Leighton. How about y'all? Amen. If you if y'all want to get good pictures, you can come on up. Or they got some going here. Videos and pictures. These are very momentous occasions, and uh, it's so awesome when someone makes their mind up to live for the Lord, and it's even more amazing and special when they do it at a very young age. Amen. God can do so much, so much with these young people, and we're looking forward to what God is going to do in Leighton's life. Amen. So Leighton, by the confession of your faith and the authority invested in me as a minister of gospel, I'm going to baptize you in the name of Jesus. Is that what you want me to do? Amen. I would like for you to say, I want you to baptize me in Jesus' name. That is my greatest joy to hear you say that. Amen. Amen. I know that you've repented of your sins and you want Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. Isn't that right? Amen. Say, yes, sir. Amen. Then with that in mind, I'm about to baptize you in this water. This is just plain old water. But it's your actions of faith and obedience to the word of God that causes this to be a supernatural event. Amen. That by me putting you under this water... And you coming up out of here, being baptized in the name of Jesus, every sin that you've ever committed and any sin that you commit in the future will be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the power of the Holy Ghost is going to fill you. Amen. And it's going to give you the ability to live a life above sin. Amen. I know you may not understand all of that, but that's what I was preaching today. Not all of us understand all of it. We just accept it in faith. Amen. All right? You accept that message in faith today? Amen. All right, let's hold our nose thing like we said, okay? And I'm going to use this. I'll tell you before I put you under so you don't even have to worry about it, okay? All right, Leighton, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Okay, here we go. Amen. There we go. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Come on, let the Holy Ghost just flood your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for Leighton, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Awesome, buddy. Amen. You got a towel? Amen. Hand me the oh, towel. Come you on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. praise. That's what it's about right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Baptized on Easter. Give me a high five. Amen. God bless you. Sing it. Amen. You got it. Anybody else coming? Amen. If so, we'll baptize you right now. Anybody wants to be baptized, go through that side door. We'll meet you. If not, God bless you. Go in the fear and the peace of the Lord. Worship us out of here, praise team. Amen. God bless y'all. Amen.